Okay. So, space travel, huh? How cool is that? Now we're even talking about getting to Mars, like for real, in flesh and bones. Who would ever say no to the red planet? Who? Uh, me, for example. I don't think it's the kind of coup we imagine. I mean, look at those astronauts squeezed inside the suits. Living in a space looks so uncomfortable. Uncomfortable? They are getting to the freaking ISS. Okay, forget for one second about all the scientific importance of that. Let's talk about zero gravity coolness. That guy is eating a floating mandarin, literally. Okay, let's talk about the food then. Which one of you would seriously eat that stuff? Disgusting. And there's no way to make it different. Food storage is one problem in space. Okay, but let's go back to the zero gravity fun. Come on, that guy, I don't know how, managed to have a gorilla suit delivered on the ISS and start chasing all the other astronauts. Can someone please make her stop? Come on. You can't be serious. I mean, I am. Look at him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she can be serious because uh, she probably doesn't know that uh, her zero gravity is the reason why astronauts have to train two hours a day to prevent bone loss. Yes. Okay. But after all the space sweat, you can just chill out on your space sofa, and out of the window, you can look at all the planets, the stars. Oh, come on. You won't be seeing anything like that. Space from space looks black, looks empty, makes you feel lonely. Have you ever heard of space madness? Uh, astronauts have plenty of reasons to go mad in space while in missions. And I'm not even mentioning uh, cosmic radiation. OK, you really want to crash everybody's dream here. Don't mind her. you all seen Interstellar, right? Matt slept all time of the travel, and in the end, he wasn't underfed, he wasn't ill, and he wasn't crazy. Sci-fi fiction always thought about that as a solution. Just get some sleep. And it wasn't the first time that pop culture actually made in a new solution for a real problem. Maybe you missed it, because you spent too much time in the lab lately. Hey. Think about that. Madness is linked to space and time perception. But while you're sleeping, you have none of this. And also you're okay with storage problem, because you just have to stay still, and you have tubes for food and waste. Actually, she's right. Uh, many recent studies uh, take a subject, those animals that use hibernation uh, as a strategy uh, to survive to periods where climate uh, conditions are extreme. Hibernation implies uh, two things, mainly. Uh, temperature reduction and slower metabolism. But attention, cooling down the body isn't enough uh, to induce hibernation uh, in humans. Uh, uh, it would produce, on the long run, uh, just uh, a massive bone resorption. As a matter of fact, uh, stress and strain, that is to say, in other words, training, uh, is, uh, play a major role in uh, stimulating bone turnover. In fact, these are not the only two mechanisms involved in hibernation. A key role is played by a protein called PTH184 that is thought to reduce the bone resorption during hibernation. Here you can see the difference in bone structure in a bear in inactivity and one in actual hibernation. So it's just not about sleeping, not saying that it's easy and risk-free completely in space, as you can see. By the way, Another problem with uh, induced hibernation in humans is the rapid cooling down of the body. Uh, this is nowadays made possible by a new technology called RhinoChill. RhinoChill is a device uh, designed to reduce temperature, uh, mainly using uh, uh, convective, convective and conductive cooling uh, uh, heat exchange. Excuse me. Uh, now it's being used in the medical field. For example, in a heart attack, each second without oxygen is a second of oxygen deprivation in the brain. More the time, more the damage. Having more time can help patients. NASA is considering all these facts during this prototype. In fact, this prototype has, among other things, heat exchange system and an injection system for the bare protein, the PTH-184. 
So in the next future, maybe human hibernation is a solution for long space travel. Okay, I don't know what you're thinking, but she got me. Let's go to Mars! <laughs>